Good morning. Uh, we have with us today Sri Ravi Kumar Jain, Managing Director of Integrated Fight Corridor Corporation of India. Uh, Sri Ravi Kumar Jain is a IRSC uh, has assumed the charge of Managing Director of DFCC IL on 11th December 2020. Uh, he is an officer of Indian Railway Service of Engineer of uh, 1986 batch. Uh, he completed his BTEC in civil engineering from Manit Jaipur and EMTEC in environmental engineering from University of Rurki, now IIT Rurki. Before joining to DFCCIL, he was posted as a Chief Administrative Officer uh, for Eastern Railway, Kolkata. Prior to that, he worked as a Executive Director, Civil Engineering, Planning, Railway Board. From 2017 to 2018, he was Divisional, Divisional Railway Manager at Samastipur. Uh, his tenure is remembered for uh, Mitsla painting at uh, entire Madhuvani station and then on the wreck of Bihar Super Kranti. For this, his team was honored by Honorable Minister of Railway and later also by Chairman Railway Board. He was also adjudged as an outstanding DRM in uh, 2018 for uh, managing large numbers of unmanned locomotives in very short time bound schedule. He also worked as a Chairman Railway Recruitment Board Ajmer for about two years where he was a part of team for the first time online examination by RRBs. Uh, he worked as a Chief Project Manager Ajmer for integrated flight corridor project and his unit was adjusted as an outstanding field in the unit of 2012 to 2011. Uh, he has worked in various construction projects for gauge conversion. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, giving your time. Thank you very much. Uh, how important is uh, DFC for the railway and the country? Uh, what is the uh, present status of the corridors and when it is entire project expected to be commissioned to the nation? A dedicated freight corridors are going to be a big game changer for the freight operations in India. Basically, we can say these are going to be revolutionary tracks for the freight operations. Right now, just through one example, one goods train which starts from the JNPT Mumbai, it takes around two to three days in reaching NCR area, Delhi area. Because the average speed is just below 20 to 25 km per hour. Mm. Once the DFC comes in position, this will get entirely changed. The three days duration will come down to less than 24 hours. The operation of the freight will be at par with almost a, any super fast or Azari train operation. Basically, dedicated freight corridor are the first of its kind since independence rail infrastructure project ever undertaken by Ministry of the Railways. We should see that railway is most energy efficient and environment friendly mode of the transport. Any country which is growing countries <coughs> like India, where we are already planning to go for the 5 trillion economy in coming couple of years, we need infrastructure for the transportation. And transportation which is a basic backbone of any economy has to be improved and for that the sustainable transportation media is given by only rail transportation. With the electrification and other innovations, we are almost going to achieve zero emission stage. So obviously for any country sustainable green development, Indian Railway is going to give a good solution in the format of the dedicated petrol. Uh, regarding this particular project, I would like to tell that it is started somewhere in 2006 to 2007. At that time, it was conceived that we should have dedicated freight corridors. In 2008, we actually started working on this through a concept plan and also the detailed estimate, etc. Actual work is started after 2014 when the land acquisition was also in position. Right now, we are working on two dedicated freight corridors. One is the eastern dedicated freight corridor starting from the Ludhiana via Dadri, Kurja 
to Danpuni in the West Bengal. And sec- it is around 1875 km, 1875 km. Another dedicated freight corridor is the Western Corridor. That starts from Mumbai, JNPT, and ends up at Dadri, that is in UP. It is approximately 1506 km, altogether around 3375 km. Out of that, we are currently working for 2850 km. And uh, regarding the status, current status, very wonderful. In last one year, Itself, we have commissioned around 1347 km, that is almost half, 47% of the dedicated freight corridor now stands commissioned. So, in nutshell, out of 2840 km of the DFC where the work is in progress, 1340 have been completed. Please share the details of scale up plan of DFCS, uh, if any. Uh, how is the proposed DFC expected to look like in, in its uh, subsequent stage, if any plan envisaged, uh, what shall be the major impact and benefits? Firstly, for dedicated fed corridors, we are working vigorously, very consistently and very fast. And as I have already pointed out, 47% of the dedicated fed corridor already commissioned. We are intending to complete major part, say more than 90% by within next 12 months, mm-hmm. that is June 23. We will be completing major part of the dedicated mm-hmm. freight corridor. Only some small steps in the western dedicated freight corridor pertaining to Maharashtra area may lag behind. Otherwise, we will be completing, number one. Next, as I have already pointed out, it is going to give a big impact on the freight movement. The first and foremost which it will bring out in the country is the reduction in the logistic cost. Our Honorable Prime Minister, our Honorable Railway Minister have got one vision that is reduction in the logistic cost. And how can it be reduced? Number one, we should have most efficient transportation system and number two, turnaround should also be better. What I have already stated through one example, the three days duration get reduced to one day with the dedicated freight corridor coming in position. So it will be a faster, heavier because we will be taking heavier trains and longer. Our operations will be double of the length of the existing train operations. So we are committed for higher, longer, heavier and faster. So this all dimensions, dedicated freight corridor has got the latest technology, latest specifications and much better type of the freight operation which will give a reliable and scheduled operation. Everybody will be at all the time aware that yes, my particular rate will reach at this time to this location and final location at this location. We will almost give so much of the IT enabling to the customer that like a Google map, they will be able to see where the micro is standing. So the IT packaging with our services customer friendliness and the reliability of services will change the entire scenario of freight operation. Actually, you see, being energy efficient and environment friendly is the one thing which is necessary for a sustainable development. Yes. But at the same time, when we have got different type of the products, say, it is not just for the bulk transport. We will work for the non-bulk, we will work for the e-commerce, we will work for the parcel operations, we will work for trucks on trains, we will work on other types of whatsoever you think of, milk, perishable, refrigerated, automobile, what not. And obviously highest priority will also be import export through the containers, more and more containerization and what is going to make a further impact on our economy is that along with the dedicated freight corridors, government has already planned to develop multimodal logistic parks. These parks will have integration with the other types of the transportation that is the road transportation, wherever possible water transportation and so many other things. So first mile and last mile connectivity will be through the other modes Mm -hmm. and the railway will be there to take an efficient transportation with the minimum logistic cost. So first reliable services with the reduced logistic cost and scheduled operations Mm -hmm. and sustainable development for the country. 
so it is going to make india as a competitive market because our products will then be a bit cheaper as compared to today's rates so going to make a big difference actually do you do you think a dedicated track for freight transportation in a, in the country should have been introduced much earlier uh, why do you think uh, there has been a delay on this front uh, by railway for so many years uh, i back to differ from you actually there is not a delay actually how to improve the transportation or rather um, rail operations or what we call a model shift from the road to the rail actually what is most important again one more statistics that at the time of independence 80% or more than that traffic was carried by the railway mm -hmm. with the growth of the road sector also mm -hmm. and other developments though our traffic grew but proportionately our model share reduced now we are carrying only 25 to 30 percent of the total traffic of the entire nation mm -hmm. which we used to keep around 80 percent plus at the time of the independence so our model share has reduced but volumetrically we have increased so why could not we compete with the road in the same manner because number one we had a mixed traffic of operation mm -hmm. we have both passenger and rails on the same so the passenger have always to be given a priority that's why the good stain operations get the lesser preference and the average speed goes down so reliability in the services goes down number one number two we tried through the doubling we tried through the terminal improvement we tried to improve the junction arrangement we also made lot of changes like electrification and so many other improvements higher power engines so we continuously worked our investment was also there but obviously the investment which is there in the road sector was proportionately much higher as compared to the investment on the railway of okay. course so of course when it was seen that along with the golden quadrilateral and its diagonal that maximum traffic is there so all types of the experiments were done which were necessary doubling multi tracking electrification yard improvement then it was thought that now we have to take a new step that was a dedicated train going on. so it is never late or never early these are the decisions taken on the basis of the economical growth of the country and need of the army mm -hmm. so at that time in 2006 7 8 at that time it was thought that yes now it is time to go for the dedicated train going on. but there are so many challenges for this and not only the finances but so many other things like land acquisition etc so these decisions have to be taken after a serious thought actually so many things have to be planned along with this one so i back to differ that we were not late but yes now we have to complete it fast dfcc il is a public sector undertaking uh, corporation registered as a company under the company act in what ways the formation of dfcu is helping in education of the project Uh, what additional leverage BFCC IL requires for a timely completion of the project? Actually, firstly, dedicated freight corridor is a PSU. It is a SPV of the Ministry of the Railway. We are linked with the Ministry of Railway through a concession agreement for a next thirty years period. By working as a PSU, we are now exclusively working on dedicated freight corridor. We have no other work. We have got four. or five major activity related to dedicated freight corridor number 1 to construct and commission the dedicated freight corridor number 2 to operate and maintain these corridors and for next 30 years and third to develop the business for moving on this corridor and fourthly wherever required think of the future development of the dedicated freight corridor so we have got a leverage that a government department has to work in different ways there are so many rules regulation theoretically these take extra time but in dedicated freight corridor as a psu we work very straight forward we take immediate decisions our financial powers are much higher than any other department so that's why we could implement it much faster way and a dedicated freight corridor will provide operation and maintenance which will be much lesser in cost is compared to any other uh, transportation system including that of the indian railway 
basically empowering you yes to get, get it is not done. just empowering you please see that our maintenance efforts will be much more done we will be having automated monitoring and inspection of the tracks ohe wire signaling we have got not only the latest technology our maintenance will be through the modern gadgets it will be monitored on real time basis through the various system on gps coordinate basis it will be recorded and we will be maintaining that one and the main power requirement for these operations and maintenance will be much lesser so will be very cost effective even in the operation period uh you are uh, following and memorable initiative in hsd duplicating mithila painting at the entire madhubani station and uh, rake of bihar sampar kranti being bihar samastipur is still widely appreciated would you like to share some of your view regarding the initiative mm. you took in a creative manner thank you narendra so, you have really <laughs> make me nostalgic from that point of view actually i will show you the background actually i joined there in uh, end of the april 2017 in samastipur division where the madhubani station lies after a couple of months i got a complete list of the cleanliness ranking of the stations in the indian railway it was having a list of a and b class stations of the indian railway 470 number of the stations and in that list of the ranking of cleanliness madhubani station was almost at the bottom last but one 469th and it was really very bad to know that i have having a station which is almost at the bottom of the cleanliness and that to a madhubani type of the station at that time i was just not knowing what is madhubani and the mithila painting so i just inquired when the area is so rich with the heri- with the cultural and the other type of the heritage details and the mithila painting in their blood so why our station is so poorly ranked so i looked at the station i went along with my team i saw i surveyed the area then i decided along with my team that we should change our station through entire proper uh, pop type of the cleaning of the walls made them pure white with the proper plaster and pop and called all the local artists you please come here at our station we will provide you the space and you do the mithila painting we will provide you the brush we will provide you the paints we will provide you all the staging arrangement we will provide you everything we will provide you snacks also <laughs> but your painting is your painting that we may not be able to pay and i was so happy that on 2nd october 2017 when when we started the cleanliness drive around 25 30 persons uh, boys girls and other came and within a week or so it became 100 plus and the entire area of the madhubani station was taken over by the locals everybody was keen to do their own painting and it was so wonderful when the painting came all our experts all the villagers are so Uh, beautiful in the art of the mithila painting they made a wonderful pictures there and with the help of the railway the space which was there in a white color got converted into an entire mithila museum type of the situation and nobody ever realized that we are going to make a new history for any station to get painted in such type of the uh, local painting so it made a history and next time when the ranking of the madhubani station came it was among the top 3 and it was appreciated by the then railway minister also a special award was also sanctioned for madhubani painting as similar happened for the madhu uh, that bihar sampar kanti train mm-hmm. on that particular rake of the train i personally requested our general manager sri lc trivedi at that time mm-hmm. that please permit us with a painting on the bihar sampar kanti which start from the darbhanga and goes up to new delhi mm-hmm. he also took the permission from the honorable minister and others and we were permitted then we brought ask the local painters you please come again and do the painting on the coaches mm-hmm. you want believe that those were so wonderfully painted the wherever those coaches went through whichever station everybody was astonished to see those eights and they are still in memory and still there are so many social media clips uh, not only in india out of india also 
and the most important what we gained out of this painting is that the painting which we did on the stations we permitted the artist to put their name along with the mobile number that we permitted and you won't believe that wherever the uh, painting clips or uh, photograph or video went on the basis of their mobile number the various agencies various individuals not only from india outside contacted them and gave them order for their paintings in their area and after that the mithila painting was brought in the delhi area also in patna also and various parts of the country also i think from that time the film is going on like uh, the crisis uh, the, the local culture should be uh, no yes uh, uh, should be created on the station yes like if you go yes. in, if you go in agra there is some some painting which shows that the uh, the Taj Mahal yes, outside yes. actually so kind of things going happen <laughs> actually at that, that. Time, at that time some some local efforts were made here and there but after the success of the madhubani it probably fretted like anything mm-hmm. all station uh, in charges wanted their local painting local. should be shown mm-hmm. on their station vigorously <laughs> so it was really I, I also feel myself <laughs> privileged to have that type of experiment done and that too with almost no cost uh, with an experience of various key positions in civil engineering department and uh, in other administrative assignment in various zones of indian railway what has been your best experience for the job and responsibility had uh, which uh, which significant accomplishment you would like to Mention and recall. Uh, very again, you are making me nostalgic. Actually, firstly, I remember the most is the my tenure of two years as DRM Samastipur, and there not only the Madhubani painting at the station and the train break. Actually, we try to do the best possible help to all the employees. In one of the cases, one of our key men who was working on the track, he was run over from the train. You won't believe. on the very next day her widow was given the ppo that is the pension order and after that very next day we gave her the appointment also that really we feel privileged that we were so quick in giving a response to a such a, a, a family which was under so big shock that there is no now family member to earn for them and they have nothing to see beyond that one and that type of a gesture and more of that was on safety front we did the manning of more than 300 level crossings in a record time of 3 to 4 months for that the division was also awarded a special outstanding award by chairman railway board for manning of the level crossing in a record time and so many other things we uh, did in the samastipur but beyond this particular tenure i still remember my tenure as a deputy chief engineer jaipur where i was fully involved in the first time gauge conversion of the jaipur station itself that was in 92 94 it was only a meter gauge station i was in charge where the first time broad gauge was brought into that station that was a very historical moment then my posting as amdavad is really wonderful where I did more than 1,000 kilometers of the gauge conversion, including Surendragar, Bhavnagar, Mesana, Palanpur, Abu Road, and so many other things. And lastly, but not the last least, the my tenure in Mumbai as senior in uh, estate and senior in coordination, we were maintaining all the suburban stations and the suburban quarters and so many other things. Life and working is entirely different in Mumbai area, especially for the suburban section. that was day and night working and it was really a very challenging my stint at that time so i remember these are the things when these are the reasons that we could continuously do our sincere work hard work that i could come to this position i am highly thankful that i was fortunate enough to have such type of the postings with the present policies of government uh, for the railway how do you see the indian railway in coming few years is there any sector uh, indian railway needs immediate action being overlooked uh, actually indian railway has got a very bright future actually it is a lifeline of the country nation itself depends on the indian railway so we have to strengthen the railway 
whosoever wants to join the railway really i will welcome all of them they have got a very bright and challenging time they will have a very challenging time in the railway actually in railways we feel the sincerity and hard work is essential and everybody is so devoted that wherever any assignment is given to any railway person he does it with true earnestness that's why the railways are running 24 by 7 in all parts of the country so i request whosoever is interested they will have a very bright time railways are here forever and the country needs it they need their services and generally it is called that after army what is the next in the hierarchy it is the railways it is always there 24 by 7 always alert always active always energetic Never, never, never sleeps. Never sleeps. <laughs> uh, being a stellar uh, technocrat with experience of multiple positions, what would be your message to young mind uh, willing to join railways? Uh, kindly share your views about Metro Rail News. Any message to our readers? Actually, I want to convey a message to all youngsters that if they want to innovate, country needs them. they every youngsters they have to think of for new technologies new developments new innovations for doing anything faster much more efficient with lesser of the cost our country is going to become a 5 trillion economy very soon and in by 2050 it may be 10 times of that so we need young minds who can do the uh, for achieving these targets these are very tough but we have to be world top 3 economy in time to come for that all youngsters have to innovate innovation means to improve the existing working and in the railway we have so much change in last 5 to 10 years especially that things have entirely changed otherwise we were having a normal type of the working normal station normal now you will see very soon we will have no waiting list how it is changing very soon you will see what i have pointed out that a good train will be running at the speed of the rajdhani so how is it going to happen with the these type of dedicated freight corridor high speed lines new types of the lines also 100% electrification all railway is going to change the entire scenario in the country and metro which are also coming in the way city is also part of the not directly in the railway but it is also a railway system so the entire railway system is a basically sustainable development for any countries continuous development growth sustainability is very important and railway provide that type of the transportation now sir can you share your views about uh, metro rail news magazine uh, any any message to our readers thank you very much Firstly, for the Metro News that uh, you have invited me, and uh, you have given me the honor of giving expressing myself with you. Uh, only my request to all the uh, uh, Metro News viewers and the listeners and uh, those who are reading this magazine that uh, we need to contribute nation's development. Wherever any projects, infra projects are going on, we should try to help them. by extending all possible support but what we see generally the locals for their own interest they come on the way they try to stop the projects which are basically for the nation's development so through this number one youngsters should come they should innovate improve the better system and those who are getting affected they should feel that they are becoming part and parcel for improving the country they should help strengthen for implementation of the project this country has to deliver has to come in top 3 economies in time to come it will improve our standard of living it's our own growth requires the infrastructure development so thank you metro news for uh, taking my voice to all parts of the nation thank you very much thank you so much for your time sir thank you so one last question i have is yes. just coming to mind what are the business opportunities for yes. smes actually it is not just the msmes all types of the industry actually you see uh, parcels e-commerce and what not containers actually msmes have got a very good opportunity that they should containerize their products or their raw materials 
they should convert it into a container rig and those container if they can't give a full rig they should aggregate with others and make it a rig so that it becomes viable and it can be very easily transported in world over what is happening that most of the projects have been at, uh, trans are being transported through containers we have to put everything in the container wherever possible if we can go for this one msme will reduce their expenditure very significantly thank you thank you so much for it